So, you saw this uh, video clip where I had a desk which was rotating and then uh, a small particle or small object ring type object was placed on that disk. We had x axis y axis drawn and then we saw what is the path of the particle with respect to the disk because the path was uh, traced out on the disk. So, we could very easily see it in leisurely. So, this was the disk, this was the disk and then the disk was rotating, but then uh, we will work from this disk frame. Okay. So, I have an x axis here, I have a y axis here fixed in the, in the disk and we are talking from the disk frame. For, for discussing the path of that object, the disk is rotating. When I say that disk is rotating about the z axis, I am using the lap frame. But then when I am saying this is the path of the object, I am using the disk frame. So, that uh, which frame I am using when I am telling some say, statement or some sentence that is very, very important. So, from the disk frame when I am talking in the disk frame from the disk frame x axis and y axis do not rotate they are fixed. They are fixed in this frame they are fixed. So, I do not have to turn the axis like that. Now, I put the particle here my that small black ring type object I put it here and then uh, I gave it a rotation when I say I gave it a rotation I am talking from the lap frame. Okay. But uh, the path of the particle is still seen in this uh, disk frame. So, in the disk frame this was going like this, you saw it, you saw it, it went like this and then it reached the periphery. So, if I look from the z axis which is the axis of rotation of the disk from the lap frame, then uh, the distance from this z axis is increasing. Initially, I had kept this much of distance, but as time passes, the distance becomes larger, 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 larger. So, something is uh, if I am using the language of Newton's second law, though I am not entitled to do that, but I know how to get the license to do that. I will be using proper pseudo forces and then I can always use the language of inertial frames. So, we will we are actually looking for those pseudo forces which will allow me to use the language of uh, Newton's first law, second law, third law and therefore, if I am using that there is some force which is pushing it away from the z axis. The distance from the z axis increasing it is not always to remember that if distance is increasing then you have a force in the radial direction you can have radial acceleration 0, but at least in this case it seems that uh, Yes, so you have to use pseudo forces and then one force seems to be away from the axis, away from the z axis which is the axis of rotation of this disc frame with respect to the lab. So, this is one. And then uh, it is not only going away from the z axis, it is also turning. So, when it is here, it turns this way, when it is here, it turns this way, when it is here, it turns this way, and the direction of velocity is, uh, diff is turned, is rotated only when you have a force, component of force perpendicular to the velocity. If you do not have that component, speed will increase or decrease. So, if you have a component which is perpendicular to the velocity, then that component will turn the path, turn the direction of the velocity and here it is turning. So, there should be a force which is perpendicular to the velocity. So, this is one and then the other is a pseudo force which is perpendicular to the velocity. At least a component should be there, 
perpendicular to the velocity. So, in the rotating frame you do have two pseudo forces or you have to assume two pseudo forces if uh, you want to use Newton's laws then uh, together with the real forces you have to use at least these two forces. Now, this one is called centrifuge it is an example of it is not definition it is an example of what we call centrifugal force and this is an example of what we call Coriolis force. Okay. So, this was uh, some kind of a uh, feel I, I tried to give you a feel that in a rotating frame of reference you need two kinds of uh, pseudo forces. Now, let me take one more example same story let us say let us use the same figure here. Let us use the same figure the, there is a disc and there is an x axis there is y axis and in the lap frame the disc is rotating about the z axis. So, it is rotating about the z axis with some angular velocity omega and uh, we will be using this axis this y axis x axis and z axis which are fixed in the disc frame. To observe the motion of a particle or an object which is placed at rest in the lap frame. Okay. So, suppose I have a particle somewhere here and this particle or this object is at rest is at rest where do I write let me write it here. Okay. This is the particle P at rest P is at rest in the lap frame. and I am looking at this particle from the disc frame and the disc frame is rotating with angular velocity omega about the z axis in the lap frame. So, that is the situation what is the path of the particle is the particle at rest is the x coordinate y coordinate z coordinate or are constant. So, if uh, this is the particle now and it has some x component this is x this is x coordinate and then it has some y coordinate and z coordinate is say 0 at this moment. Now, in the lap frame the disc rotates and the x axis becomes like this. So, the particle has come to a on the x axis particle was not on the x axis to start with and now the particle is on the x axis. So, the particle is not at rest particle is moving. So, that means, the particle is coming down it, it, it is from the disc frame I will say that from the disc frame my frame is not rotating in the disc frame x axis is fixed y axis is fixed and therefore, the particle is here and then the particle comes here. So, if you work out it is going in a circle if uh, in the lap frame if the disc is rotating this way this particle is going in a circular path in a circular path like this. If it is going in a circular path it is in acceleration it is in acceleration. Okay. So, in the disc frame if I want to use Newton's second law there is an acceleration. So, I have to assume some pseudo forces the real forces is 0 f total f total f net 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 means the real force sum of all real forces sum of all real forces. This uh, particle this object may be placed on a table. So, the gravity mg the normal force everything add to 0 sum of all real forces is 0, but then I have to supply pseudo forces I have to supply pseudo forces. So, that so that you have this acceleration using Newton's second law all right. 
So, the centrifugal force will be there and what will be that centrifugal force that will be that you can obtain uh, from other examples also and you know it very well that uh, the centrifugal force I am using disc frame. So, there is a centrifugal force and that centrifugal force will be away from the axis and its value will be m times omega square times m times omega square times distance from the axis all right distance from the axis r what is distance from the axis here is the axis this one this let's call it capital x and let's call this radius as r this will not be needed so centrifugal force will be uh, this uh, m into omega square into that capital x which direction outward But the acceleration is inward. This particle is going in a circle, and when the particle goes in a circle, the acceleration is inward. And how much is that acceleration? If it is going in a circle of this radius x, if the particle is going in a circle with this radius x, and uh, the angular velocity of this particle is also omega, the magnitude, because uh, there is the same time period after which the in the last frame the x axis will return at the same place and the particle will have the same coordinate. So, the angular velocities of the disk in the lab and of the particle in the disk they are going to be equal. Okay. So, the centrifugal force is uh, this much outward, but the acceleration is but the acceleration is omega square x inward ok in terms of speed it will be omega square x. So, the centrifugal force is outward, but the acceleration is inward that means I have yet another force yet another pseudo force and that is inward and that is more than this and more than this and that gives me this acceleration. So, I have Coriolis force. I must have Coriolis force, I must have another pseudo force and this depends on the on the velocity and that should be equal to 2 times m omega square x and that should be inward. And then, then the this is the pseudo force number 1 and this is pseudo force number 2 one is uh, outward, one is inward, inward is double of the um, outward. So, this resultant of these two will be inward and the magnitude will be m omega square x and then yes mass times acceleration will be equal to the total force, total means the real and the pseudo. So, these are uh, some examples where uh, you can work out what this uh, pseudo force is, what the Coriolis force is. Now, but remember they may look very similar mm, the, the apart from the factor 2 and the direction they look very similar m omega square x. But this one is this one is like m omega times v right omega into x is v ok. So, it I will I would like to write it as 2 m omega v because it is dependent on the velocity. If the velocity is not there, Coriolis force is not there. If you consider that uh, Bohr's model, you have a plus q charge here and minus q charge here going in a circle with some uniform speed. So, if I put up a, a frame which is rotating at that same angular velocity as this charge, this charge is not moving in that rotating frame. If it is not rotating this frame, then uh, the actual force real force is is you know e minus q square or q square by 4 pi epsilon naught and this radius is square inward force of attraction ok inward this much is the force, but this particle is at rest. This particle is not going in a circle I am talking from that rotating frame 
my frame is rotating and from that frame I am analyzing the motion of this particle and in that frame in this particular case the particle is not moving it is at rest and therefore what uh, pseudo force I require the total force should be 0 the particle is at rest. So, in the disc frame or in the rotating frame I set up a frame which is rotating I set up a frame this is x axis this is y axis and then this whole thing is rotating in the lab and when I go to that frame I find that my particle has same x coordinate same y coordinate same z coordinate all the time it is at rest and therefore if I want to use Newton's laws the total force should be 0. But I know that there is an attraction that cannot be done away and therefore the pseudo force that I have to use the pseudo force that I have to use is just q square by 4 pi epsilon naught r square outward and that is a centrifugal force that is centrifugal I do not need Coriolis force Coriolis force depends on the velocity if there is no velocity of the particle in my rotating frame I do not need Coriolis force. So, here I will be writing this as I will not write this as uh, omega times v centrifugal force depends on the position and the Coriolis force depends on the uh, speed on the velocity direction and magnitude of the velocity. So, this uh, difference uh, one should take care. Let me now derive a formal expression for centrifugal force and Coriolis force if a particle is in motion with respect to the rotating frame. So, let us have a, a rotating frame. So, let me draw uh, access system some access system which is rotating in the lab and the angular velocity is omega. Let us take this uh, z axis as the axis of rotation okay. and then x axis and y axis are rotating and in this frame in this rotating frame there is a point A or point P which is fixed in this frame there is a point P which is fixed in this frame and I am looking at this vector O P. It can be a particle and uh, this O P can be the position vector of the particle or any vector this vector O P I am talking of the vector O P. P is P point point P is fixed in the rotating frame all right therefore from the rotating frame so op is is constant fixed not changing in the rotating frame but but op is changing op is changing in the lap frame which is supposed to be inertial in the lap frame i am interested in at what rate this op is changing in the lap frame okay so, what I do this particle P since the entire frame is rotating about z axis and the P point is fixed in that frame. So, P is also rotating about the z axis and it is going in a circular path it is going in a circular path ok. So, it is going in this circular path with angular velocity omega and therefore, O P is here after some time op will be here i am now talking from the lap frame i need ddt of op in the lap frame after some time the frame will be here this uh, op will be here p point will be here and so on so it is rotating so if i just look for this point p so let me draw this diagram again 
this is the path of that point P of that particle P. So let's say particle P is here at some instant and this is the z axis and this is OP vector, this is OP vector, this is OP vector. Let me call this A, let us name it OP vector, I will call it A, A vector. So, this is A vector at this time. After dt time, what will happen? After dt time, this particle will reach here and this angle, this angle will be omega t, this angle will be omega delta t after delta t time the particle will be here. So, this was vector a at time t and this is the vector a at time t plus dt and this is a change, this is that change, this is that change, this you can say this is delta a which is a at t plus dt and minus a at t, this is that vector and uh, divide by time you will get this d d t of o p in the lab frame ok. Now, and this is uh, our origin is here remember our origin is here. So, this is not actually the a vector this is the a vector o p this is that a vector and this is that a at time t plus d t this is it, but nevertheless things will not change much. Okay, this is your uh, a at t plus dt and this is this is a at t, but still still this remains this remains this remains uh, this much. So, ddt of ddt of o p is same as let me call this point c the center of the circle this is ddt of ddt of o c and plus c p. This vector o p can always be written as o c plus c p and o c is fixed, o c does not change with time. This particle goes in a circle and this is a center of the circle and that will remain always there as time passes. So, this is essentially ddt of c p. Okay. So, that is why this uh, original diagram is also valid. Now, how much is this? What do I write for this? This is C p is, 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 is this is C p and the D d t of uh, is this one and how much is this? The magnitude is this magnitude will be this length here, this length here C p which is fixed and then uh, unto omega into delta t ok. So, this is uh, the length of this and the direction of this uh, delta a vector is uh, along the tangent along the velocity ok. So, how much is this now d d t of that if you do this delta a by delta t delta a by delta t that is or, or it is already written there that is equal to C p into omega this is the magnitude and along along the tangent along the tangent. And how much is C p? C p is uh, this O p and then uh, if this angle is some theta which is fixed once again this will be O p times sin theta and then omega and the direction is along the tangent and you work out that this is nothing but this is nothing but cross product of o vector this omega vector and this uh, o p vector. See the magnitude, see the magnitude, magnitude of this vector is here magnitude of this vector is here, sine of angle between these two is here, omega this is omega vector and you know what is omega vector, when I am talking omega vector, if the axis of rotation is there that is the direction of omega vector and if you are looking uh, from top then uh, it should go uh, anti clockwise. So, that is the direction of omega vector, so it is omega cross op. 
and therefore, what you can write is ddt of ddt of vector a in lab is equal to omega cross a omega cross a this is an important relation we will uh, take it from here now this is an important relation and you you can go through this derivation again and convince yourself that the direction of omega cross op is also along that tangent how this omega cross op once again once again you write this op as oc plus cp and oc oc is in the same direction as omega so this cross product is zero and this will be omega cross cp now it is easy to see the direction this is a circle and then you have uh, omega is uh, perpendicular to the circle and this uh, cp is radius so if you have a circle this is c here this is p here cp and omega is perpendicular to the disk coming out and uh, since it is going this way so it is going this way so omega is in the positive direction of omega is coming out of the board now you see what is omega cross cp so this is omega and this is cp and omega cross cp you can work out what is omega cross cp it has to be perpendicular to omega therefore it should be in this plane it is perpendicular to the cp therefore in this plane it is perpendicular to the cp and then uh, you do this omega cross cp and you see that it is in the direction of velocity so you can uh, very easily verify that this whole thing can be written as omega cross op and therefore ddt of this vector a in the lab frame is equal to omega cross a you don't have to actually differentiate we will be using this relation very extensively in our rigid body dynamics you don't have to actually differentiate you just uh, take the cross product with this uh, angular velocity vector and you get the differentiation itself provided this a vector is fixed in the rotating frame this whole derivation is based on that this a vector is fixed in the rotating frame in the rotating frame it is not changing then uh, this is true but if the particle also moves also moves in the rotating frame this a vector is not a constant vector this a vector is changing with time even in the rotating frame then what will happen you will have to add that term that's all ddt of a vector in the lab frame is equal to omega cross a if a is constant in the lap frame in the rotating frame if not the only thing i have to do is i have to add one more term da dt is equal to this is in the lap frame this is equal to d a d t in the rotating frame in the rotating frame plus omega cross a so if a is fixed in the rotating frame you don't have any d a d t in the rotating frame then it is just omega cross a so because of the frame rotation because of the frame rotation you are getting this omega cross a and because of the particle moving in the or the vector changing in this uh, rotating frame you are getting this term so this is the relation which is general more general than this this is true when a is fixed in the rotating frame and this is true if this uh, a vector changes in the rotating frame so we will start from here